there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Marvin again, back with some more reactions. Welcome back to Smitty Reacts. And on this video, we're going to be checking out an interview with Andre 3000, uh, famous from Outcast versus uh, Screen, all that good stuff. Player, I'm pretty sure he's a player, right? Didn't he write a play? I can't recall. He's done so much in his career. <laughs> but at any rate, man, we're here to check him out. Uh, now, this interview is basically explaining his newest album that's getting ready to release, I think, at midnight tonight. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out tonight. Um, of his new album, and the title's crazy. I looked at the track list. The track list titles are also crazy. Like, I don't even have them up in front of me. They're long. <laughs> but I'm here to check it out and kind of see what his thought process is on this album. Now, one thing I do know, uh, just going in, I know it's not going to be a rap album. And that alone is going to be divisive. You know, it's just the fact that he's probably one of the best lyricists that has ever rapped, in my humble opinion. You know, the thing is, is like, I know that creatively, a lot of people can kind of burn out or feel like maybe they don't have anything more to say or contribute to to what they're known for. So maybe they want to take a different creative turn. So I'm, I'm kind of here to see if that's what he's talking about or what it is. And then obviously, too, like over the last few years, he's done little pop ups with his flute. <laughs> you know, um, I just saw one recently where he was in Japan walking around and somebody recognized him and he had his flute with him. And he's doing this whole like kung fu traveling warrior kind of thing. Like he'll just pop up in random places with his flute. So, you know, I'm definitely here to check that out. So anyway, man, before I hit start on this thing, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, let me know below what y'all thoughts are on this. Um, you know, if it, should he go back to rapping? Should he pursue his interest? Should he like, you know, just disappear? <laughs> like what, what y'all want from Andre 3000 at this point? Because at, at this point, honestly... I don't think he's got anything else left to prove, but y'all let me know what y'all think. Anyway, let me go ahead and start on this thing. This is the GQ um, interview of Andre 3000 um, from earlier today. It, this just hot. This is uh, was released as well. So let's go. Like I like season season food. Like I hate bland food. Okay. So I season my clothes a lot. One of my homies told me, like, after I finished Hey Ya and I played it for him, he said, man, if you put that out, man, your career is over. <laughs> <laughs> Idle Wild. That's, like, one of the, the coolest things about the recording. Like, I'm actually listening to myself be a baby at something, you know, be a baby at this new machine that I've never touched. Mm. I feel that. New Blue Sun. That's the new. That's the name of the project. New Blue Sun. This feels like '80s doctor's office. <laughs> I think it's cozier than that. Psychiatrist's office. Psychiatrist's office. There we go. <laughs> that's amazing, man. Oh, thank you, man. What kind of flu? Pause right here. What kind of flute is that, though? I'm, I'm kind of curious. It, it kind of gives me like a dir is it didgeridoo? Is that what that's called? Uh, type of sound to it, like a real halt, like deep kind of tone to it? Or is that like an African flute of some sort? Like, let me know. Let me know below. What's up, man? What's up? Bring it in, bring it in. I like the shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank cool, you very much. Cool. Yeah. yeah, you know, stripes. Yeah. Just, just trying to be like you. It's stripe just time. Trying to be like you. Get your stripes, yeah, yeah. We should make it clear that you actually use this laundromat. Yeah, yeah, this is a laundromat uh, not too far from my house. How'd you end up out here? I was making a move from, from New York and... First of all, shout out to the So Fresh, So Clean uh, <laughs> Tide bottle back there. <laughs> That's crazy. Second of all, bro got bros using the laundromat. Bros using the laundromat. Like, come on. You know he got infinite stacks in his bank account. I'm talking about it's down, not down the street from my house, and he's got, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's over here doing laundry at the laundry bag. I respect that just on, on principle, just on GP. I, res I respect that. So. 
Yeah. It's stripe it's time. Like, yeah. Get your stripe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's got you the make it clear that you actually use this laundry. On. Yeah, yeah. This is a uh, laundromat uh, not too far from my house. How did you end up out here? I was making a move from from New York, and it was really supposed to be like a like a six month kind of you know reset. You know, come to California, get some sun. Hey. Hey. <laughs> what is that? I got it from a Ramsey's the Great Museum in San Fran. We went to this thing, um, and I bought this just as. And as now he's just the, la- the laundry guard. He hangs user. out like yeah. I sit him in the win- in the the window sill of my car. Like me and my son, kind of like I think Seven may have put like just a plain rubber duck. And then when I saw this one, I was like, Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, that's beautiful. We're gonna freak that's it great. like that's the Egyptian. Yeah, yeah. One. So and yeah, it's I like kinda... your son a little bit with you too. Which is yeah, beautiful. I think people would be surprised to know that you go to a laundromat to do your laundry. Yeah, but but only for that kind of convenience thing, and and it's fun for me because it's it gives me a chance to kind of uh, to be out in the world and like when mm. I'm putting clothes like in the dryer, I usually go out in the alley and practice. You know, I play my instrument out in the alley, and it's just something to do to get out in the sun a little bit. What is important about being out in the world? I see that uh, meeting people. Like I met this old lady here. Uh, she was from Vienna. I had my bass clarinet at the time and I was kind of playing. And she says, uh, the, your music, the music that you're playing, it reminds me of my old country. We sparked up like a real cool friendship. And she was like, if you come here next Saturday, I'll bring you all of my old record collection of classical music from Vienna. And she told me a time to meet her, but unfortunately I was late. And so when I came, I, she wasn't around. So I hadn't seen her. So I'm hoping she's still alive, you know. Okay. So people, clock that it's you when wow. you're here? Nah, she, she didn't know who I was. It's kind of like, some people may recognize him. Pause. That's crazy. <laughs> Real quick, though, that, that also shows, like, the, the importance of connecting with people. Like, getting out, meeting people, talking to people, you know, sharing ideas, all that good stuff, you know. Um, mainly because, like, it sparks creativity. And it also sc- sparks the exchange of ideas. Where, like, he said, like, he met this lady. You know, obviously didn't work out, <laughs> but he still met her. They had a conversation. You know, she saw something in him that she that he liked or she liked or and vice versa. I, I hope he gets that record collection, <laughs> you know, but I like that exchange of energy and that exchange of information. That's really cool. You know, especially with somebody like this where you would think, oh, he's got life figured out. He's got all this stuff figured out. And, and he's really laying bare here like, hey, look, I'm still learning too. like I'm just a person like the rest of y'all. I'm still trying to figure this out. And and the rubber ducky story, come on now. Can't get mad at that. (laughs) Let's go. Late. And so when I came, she wasn't around. So Mm. I hadn't seen her. So I'm hoping she's still alive, you know. Do people clock that it's you when you're here? Nah, she she didn't know who I was. It's kind of like some people may recognize me. Like, oh, man, that's cool. But it's not like crazy. Like, I kind of like what my life is where where I can come and do this. You know what I mean? Like a lot of my contemporaries, like, I kind of feel bad for them, mm-hmm. you know, because we got children and like, sometimes like some of these people can't even go out without having paparazzi follow them. And it's like, it's not, that's, that's a whack, that's a whack ass life, man. Like, I kind of like some normalcy, even though it's not normal, but I came from that. Like, I used to hang out at, you know, the laundromat, like when we didn't have a wash and dry at, at our house. My mom worked at the beauty salon, so it's like I'm mm. in these places, social kind of situation, you know? Yeah, when you say normalcy, what do you mean by that? Walk with your family and not have people follow you and chase you and you can't take your kid to the park and play. Right. Because people will Was follow you. Was your life you. ever like that? At certain times, uh, I think maybe at the height of, at the height of Outkast, um, over ye- like years of like letting it simmer a little bit and I'm older now so a lot of people they see me like you look like him but nah nah that ain't 3000 so it's like it's funny because it's <laughs> like when you're 19 you're probably working towards like any pause I could see that though like just being out you know walking around you looking seeing the cat and he's like man look like Andre 3000 that ain't Andre 3000 bro ain't no way you over here at the laundromat ain't no way <laughs> but normal you know you're working towards like so, oh, so let's, funny. let's be successful let's 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 see where this can go exactly and then you spend the back end of it trying to work your way back to the there's life you want what you want to you don't want it me and big boy used to literally pray every night lord really really we just want to be good rappers that's that was our prayer it was called wow. like a rapper's prayer like <laughs> lord we really just want to be good rappers and we did that and it's kind of like now we're seeing that it's happened 
I love that it's happened. Like, I don't regret any of that, but it's kind of like now that I'm at a certain level, I miss certain things about normalcy. And like, I'm an only child, so I've always kind of been to myself yeah. anyway. I kind of mm -hmm. like my solitary kind of chill life. And I, I think you do have a choice. But you could still live the other way if you wanted to. You, are you ever like tempted to like? That's the, that's the problem. The balance, like that balance. I do have an urge because I want to create things. Like I'm, I'm happiest when I'm creating things. And I was right. talking to my manager and publicist. I had to really ask myself, do you want to possibly be famous again? Like, do you want to turn Ain't it up something. again? And I was like, let, let me say this real quick and I'm gonna get back to it. Ain't that something where you have the choice to be famous? Because he knows he can do it. He knows he can snap his fingers show up in a couple of places and all of a sudden it's on and cracking like like he's doing right now and the thing is even right now he's probably contemplating like all right do i really want to go back to doing what i used to do do i really want to because like he said he wants some normalcy in his life like being able to do stuff like this where he's like i'm gonna slide over here to the to the to the um laundromat or be out with my my family in public or be able to do stuff in public or want my my private time by myself like i get it I get it. And I'm not even famous, <laughs> you know, but I had the understanding where it's like, you want some calm in your life. Sometimes you want that. You, you want to place a respite in your life, you know, and he's got there, but he's like, yo, like I do want to be creative and I can't really do that without this platform. I get it, bro. I get it. Well, I'll just put the record out and just don't do any press for it or anything like right, that. But see? then it's kind of a disservice to the music because I want people to like, check it out. I want people to hear it. I had to find some balance. Balance. We've been a little coy. You have a whole flute album now. Uh, I wouldn't call it a flute album. It's an album, but I am playing wind instruments. Uh, sometimes it's native wind flutes. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's digital wind instruments, which I actually discovered right before we started recording the album. Some of the songs, what you're hearing, you're hearing me go through patches on the instrument and I, you hear me figuring the instrument out. So it's new, which I thought was really cool. Uh, to me, that's like one of the, the coolest things about the recording. Like I'm actually listening to myself be a baby at something, you Learn know, be a play. baby at this new machine that I've never touched. A document of this exists. Yes. It has a name. Yes. New Blue Sun. New, new Blue, Blue Sun, Sun is the album. Many people will ask why a woodwind album. I ask myself why anything like <laughs> why why did we record these albums before in my career? Like, it's just kind of those are the things that came, you know. Um, I would say it's probably this felt more real and authentic to me. Like, because I don't stop trying things. Like, I always try, you know, recordings and I try vocal things. Uh, I even try to jot down ideas and lyrics here and there, but none of that just, none of that excited me. You know, it always, it, it kind of felt like, like I'm trying to do a thing, you know what right. I mean? And I don't like when I'm trying to do a thing. It just I, felt inauthentic. And this felt like the realest I could be at the time. People who like pay close attention know that you're, you're creating all the time. This is the first thing though that actually is making it out in the world. I've actually played some win things that I've put out in the world that I call myself another name under different mm. artists that are out there that, you know, I was just kind of testing it out in a way. Wait, so you have anonymous win recordings out there already? Yes. Okay. Yes, from wow. known artists. Really? And, they, and they've been cool. Quite. Wow, that's kind of a big deal. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. And, and, and like, they kept this secret. Let, hold on. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, the fact that he's able to do that. You know, just on the, on the, on the chill, on the low. Like, just be creative, but not seek the, the attention for being creative. Like, that says a lot. This is the first a lot to thing, care. though, that actually is making out in the world. I've actually played some when things that I've put out in the world that I call myself another name under different mm. artists that are oh. out there that, you know, I was just kind of testing it out in a way. Wait, so you have anonymous wind recordings out there already? Yes. Okay. Yes. From known artists. Really? And, and they've been cool about keeping it secret. Yeah, I, w I wasn't sure how to present the wind thing because I would just be on the street and play because I, I play like in nature a lot. I just play hiking, walking. Uh, in the city, wherever. And what started to happen was people started kind of like filming me on their cell phones and posting it and making beats out of it, which is cool to me. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to find a way, how can I share my love for discovering this wind instrument with more people? Like, yeah. where it's just not this kind of 
where's Waldo? There's this dude playing kind of thing. So uh, in approaching, I knew I wanted to do a wind based album, but I didn't really know what I wanted to sound like. I had influences, I had ideas. And what I kept were the influences? Uh, influences ranging from Coltrane to Philip Glass to- Pause. See, that's, what I, that's exactly what I was thinking. This is the most jazz type of approach to music you can do. Like for real, like you're just walking around, you, you're figuring out an instrument, you're trying to pick it up, you know? And then like he's doing the, you know, like he said, he didn't want to do the way the world's where's Waldo thing, which I appreciate. But at the same time, it's like, I think back to myself as a kid, like I played trombone for like a hot second. Like it wasn't very long, you know, maybe a year. And then I put it down, Wish I hadn't, but that's what happens, you know? But I'm thinking to myself, like if I was a kid and I'm trying to learn an instrument and then all of a sudden, like, I feel like I love the instrument. Where would I take it? I, I want to record myself. Once you record yourself, it's like, dang, I, I got a whole bunch of recordings. Why don't I just release an album with it or, or formulate it into an album and kind of go that approach? And it's it's honestly probably one of the most innocent approaches to music you can really come, you, you can really have. You know what I'm saying? Like, just a genuine approach to just being like, hey, I just want to put this out for people to hear. If y'all like it, cool. If you don't like it, cool. <laughs> you know? It's more for me than anything because I just want to see what people think as well as express my creativity. And that's where he's coming from right here. Like, come on, man. Three stacks the goat. <laughs> because, like, I, I love that honest, earnest approach to, to this. You know? Like, so good. Started kind of, like, filming me on the cell phones and posting it. That's what I was talking about earlier. Making beats out of it, which is cool to me. But, um... Yeah, I was trying to find a way. How can I share my love for discovering this wind instrument with Muscle more people? Thinking too. Like, yeah. This album might not be the most kind of, sampled album ever. Where's Waldo? Ever. <laughs> there's this dude playing kind of thing. So For the new generation. Uh, and approaching, I knew I wanted to do a wind-based album, but I didn't really know what I wanted to sound like. I had influences. I had ideas. And what I kept were the influences? Trying, uh, influences ranging from Coltrane, like Coltrane. to... Philip Glass to uh, Steve Reich. It's a very intimate record. I've heard it. It's like getting a very like luxurious and expensive, but very like tender mental massage. <sighs> nice. I'll take Ooh, it. I describe okay. it as just like pure like breathing, you know, and, and living and the way it was recorded. It was all improv and spontaneous. So we were living it. What you hear on the record is how we heard it as we were doing it. It wasn't planned. It wasn't like, hey, we're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do these chords and we're going to. We only talked about feeling, you know? Mm. Are you apprehensive? Very, very, very <laughs> apprehensive. Do you feel like that played into decisions you made about Outcast too? I think uh, just in general, when it came to figuring out what we would do creatively and where where my creative juice is coming from within Outcast, like there, there was a certain point where I just didn't know where else to go. You know, I didn't, yeah. like even now, like, People think, oh man, he's just sitting sitting on raps or like he's just holding or holding these raps hostage. Like, I ain't got no raps like that. Like it's, it's <laughs> it actually feels sometimes it feels inauthentic for me to rap because I, I don't have anything to talk about in that way. Like I'm 48 years old and not not to say that age is a thing that dictates what you rap about, but in a in a way it does. And like things that happen in my life like what are you talking like i gotta go get a, a colonoscopy like what do you <laughs> yeah. what, like what do you rap about you know what i mean like my eyesight my eyesight is going bad like <laughs> but you're not you're not just any rapper like boss. <laughs> here's the thing though for real for real three stacks and i know i know people are probably all up and down the comments already on these videos or whatever here's what you talk about and jay-z's laying the blueprint and like he literally is you talk about adult things. You don't talk about what you used to do on the street. You don't talk about what you did in the height of Outcast. You know what I'm saying? Or, or whatever happened there. You don't even air your dirty laundry about this, that, and the third. You talk about adult stuff. Raising your family. Leaving a legacy. Talking about, you know, your perspective on things. You know, where it's like, I see these people doing this, but at the same time, it's like, maybe y'all could do a little differently. I understand he may not be wanting to talk down to people. Or, or feel like he's being, a, you know, a guest in his own house. I get that. But at the same time, people people still want to hear what he got to say in terms of rapping. And, and I like the fact that he's been dropping little verses here and there as well. 
Um, I haven't heard that song. I haven't heard the one that he put out with Killer Mike, but I know it's out there. I haven't heard it yet. But I need to check that out. I'm just saying, like, hey. He, but at the same time, yeah, I understand. You got to get a colonoscopy and all that stuff. Like, we we know, bro. Like, I'm losing my eyesight. That could be a part of it, too. You can put whatever you want in your ass, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, let's go. And the fact that he's 48, he's only like three years older than me. That's tripping me out. Let's go, bro. Not to say that age is a thing that dictates what you rap about, but in a, in a way it does. And like things that happen in my life, like what are you talking, like I gotta go get a, a colonoscopy. Like what do you, <laughs> what, like what do you rap about? You know what I mean? Like my eyesight, my eyesight is going bad. Like, but you're not, you're not just any rapper. Like you're a, right. a top five top, you know, to many people. To me, it's like you're it's basically cool, being bro. like, I have a very beautiful sports car in the garage, but I choose never to, to drive it, you know? Which is, which is your talent. Talent is one thing, but honestly, it's, I think timing and momentum is more important than talent and the energy of it. Like talent, it's a lot of people with talent. And we're seeing that now. Like there's so many dope people on the internet like that are just raw, but it's your timing, is what you're talking about. It's if you're catching the zeitgeist to what's happening in, yeah. in the world. Right. And like, my goal is I want to connect. I'm not talking about nothing that I can't connect with in it. Have you it's, tried? It's no, it's no use. Yeah, I try all the time. Like, I'm open to producers now, like the young producers, and I get beats all the time. Like, and people send me songs, like, to get on remixes and stuff like that, but I don't be knowing what to talk about most of the time, you know? Do you think that's about expectations or, it's, or, or lack of self-belief? Like, where do you think that comes from? Like, I think you're your best and worst critic, and I only work on feeling. Feeling is my own only barometer of what I'm doing. I like, that. I don't feel like I'm the best rapper. I don't feel like I'm the best producer. I don't feel like I'm the best singer, actor, none of that. It's just, for me, my gauge is feeling. Mm. And that's always been that way, even within Outkast. Like, if it felt right, I ain't care what other people thought. If it felt right, it was like, I ain't gonna argue with what it feel like. And if it don't feel right to me, which it hasn't in a while, like when it comes to rapping or vocal, you know, type of music, I don't do it. The song is more important, the, the music is more important. I was looking at the song titles. I wanted to ask you about a few. Yeah, of for sure. The first song is called, I swear I really wanted to make a rap album, <laughs> okay. rap in quotation marks, but this is literally the way the wind blew me this time. In my mind, I would love to make a rap album. Like, I would love to make a rap album, but this is what came at this time and it felt authentic. One of the things that's so great about you as a rapper is the direct. Pause right here. That title, <laughs> that title's the most realist, authentic title I think I've ever heard on, a, on, a, on any project. Maybe, maybe, I heard, maybe I haven't heard enough projects, I don't know. But that title, let me rewind that. Good luck looking, good luck searching for that online, but. <laughs> I swear, I really wanted to make a rap album, rap uh -huh. in quotation marks, but this is literally the way the wind blew me this time. The in wind. my mind, I would love to make. Let's break that down too, because it's, it's a woodwind. It's a wind album. Woodwinds, uh, like you said, native native flutes, all that kind of stuff. Literally, the way the wind blew me. Like even that, he's being thoughtful about the title. Like, I see you, bro. You sneaking it in on us. Rap album, like. I would love to make a rap album, but this is what came at this time and it felt authentic. One of the things that's so great about you as a rapper is the directness and the, and the way that you'll just, you would talk about your life. So when you said yesterday, I don't know what to talk about now, I was like, how is that, how is that possible? I was once in the studio with, a, with an artist, a younger artist, uh, Tyler Creator, uh, and we were talking about rapping as you're old. And I, I was kind of telling Tyler, I was like, man, I just don't know what, like, I'd rather write a book or something at this point. Like, I don't know, like, you gotta do it. And I was like, why? He was like, because it shows us what we can do when we get to that age. But mm. to make it into a entertaining song to where it's just not self-serving or it's not just, like, there's a part of entertaining someone else too. I know I joked about, yeah, having to go get a colonoscopy and all this kind of stuff. And that's a real thing in my life, but to make that into a song or- Why not? Like, yeah, of course, but I gotta make it into a song that feels good as a song. But your you know track I mean? record as making people feel good through song is- Track mm. record is one thing, the right now is a whole nother. I can't put anything Ooh. else out in the- Run that back. 
to He's make that Jewel. into a song or why not? Like, yeah, of course. But I got to make it into a song that feels good as a song. But your you track I mean? record as making people feel good through song is track record is one thing. The right now is a whole nother. Hear that track record is one thing. The right now is a whole nother. And that's a thousand percent right. Because here's the thing. And, and, and it sucks, but it's true. It's not what you've done in the past. It's the what are you doing for me right now? You know what I'm saying? Ain't that some? Now, the advantage is when you've done a lot of good things in the past, you've built that rapport, you've built the relationship, you've built that trust. You know what I'm saying? You, you've built that ability to, like, forgive. <laughs> Even if you don't necessarily agree, you give them that grace. But at the same time, they may not come back to you again just off the fact you're not doing what they want you to do right now. He's so right in that thought and that statement. You know, ain't that something like three stacks is all right. <laughs> all right. The <laughs> real thing right in my life, but to make that into a song or why not? Like, yeah, of course. But I got to make it into a song that feels good as a song. But your you track I mean? record as making people feel good through song is track record is one thing. The right now is a whole nother. I can't put Ooh. anything else out in the world if I'm not excited about it, because how can I expect you to be excited about it? If you how can I expect you to think, oh, this is raw? Oh, this is fresh. If I don't feel that way, like what's that uh that saying with that drug addict say? They say, well, the longer I'm out of it, the better chances I have of staying out of it. So <laughs> that's it kinda, not what America wants to hear. I no, I understand, but it feels that way. Like I feel that. as I keep going, like it's like you keep slowing down too. Like people don't understand that there's a physicalness to to rapping. I always but say it's like it's like being genres, a boxer. Like you got to think. It's but don't you think like the genre is big enough to encompass all of that? Look at the the greatest boxers now. What do they do? They do exhibition fights every now and then, but they're not stepping in the ring ring. You know but what, what I mean? What if rapping wasn't yeah. boxing? What if it was? No, but else it entirely? is though. That's what but I'm it saying. Is. It is it's partly physical. physical, partly mental. When boxers, when they're about to, he's right. It's very physical. If you if you if you're a good rapper. You understand the physicality behind it, where it's like your breath control, your 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 core strength, your your endurance levels, doing a full two hour set, you know, or whatever it might be. You can do that in your twenties and thirties, your forties. When you start getting to fifties and sixties, it's like who who's really coming to see a rapper sit down in a chair and rap their raps? And even then it's like they might be having a problem getting that out. Like I'm not saying it can't happen because we don't know <laughs> quite yet, you know, where that might take us here. Like most of the rappers we know is just now, like in our pop, you know, in, in my culture, in my era, are just now getting into their fifties and sixties, you know, that's still able, like, come on, we we got to see it, we got to see it. But he's right though; he, he's definitely right. Like, there's definitely some physicality that goes involved to doing a good show, and, and if you can't do it anymore. You might not, you might not want to do it anymore. Otherwise, you tarnish your legacy. Just saying. Let's go. Look at the the greatest boxers now. What do they do? They do right. exhibition they train, every though. now and then, Boxing but they're not training. stepping in the ring ring. Mike Tyson's training. You know but what I mean? What if rapping wasn't boxing? What if it was? No, but it is title? though. That's what I'm saying. It is partly physical, partly mental. When boxers, when they're about to fight, they have to train. So if I were to make a rap album, the best thing I could probably do is just be around rappers. You know what but I mean? But that's like, not part of your life right now, really. Yeah, it's not even like, I don't even like going to the studio and just hanging out with niggas smoking all day. You know, I just, I just don't. It's gotta be weird to have all that that's energy fair. directed toward you. People coming up to you on the street or whatever and be like, do this, do this, do this. And you're like, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I wish I could answer them. That's man. a lot of cosmic pressure. It's like being brought it to is. bear on you. It yeah. is, it is. And, and that's, to that point, that t that title, the first song, yeah, I'm kind of addressing it in a way. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I like for me, like washing is kind of like cooking. Like I like season season food. Like I hate bland food. Okay. So I season my clothes a lot. We're in our uniform era, is that right? Yeah, I guess you definitely can call it a uniform. It's easy for me. Like it's kind of like even when I when I look around now and I look at kind of what's happening in the world. Like everybody turned up in the late 90s and 2000s. Our contemporaries were looking at us crazy. Like, who are y'all? Yeah. Like y'all are from another planet. Now the planet is here, you know, like all, all the kids it came, are turned came, up, you know what I mean? Like, which is beautiful. I just love this workwear kind of stripes and these overalls, they kind of, they're very comfortable. I call them like adult baby clothes. You just feel like really <laughs> comfortable and snug and like you have places to put your hands. 
I feel this that. is yours, these overalls. Yeah. What is the brand called? From now on, they will have no choice but to call us the Ants. This is a workwear brand, for sure. And like, when you look at Ants, it's like, they're always like working. working I'm at the stage where mm. I'm loving to do things with my hands. Yeah. You know, and things that I can do when I'm 75 years old or when I'm 80 years old. And that outfit reflects that. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think about clothing. Like, I'm, I'm at work. Like, I'm actually drawing or painting in these. I still love it that, like, the young kids, they'll come up like, oh, man, your fit is fresh. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you, man. Do you feel like the <laughs> uniform is a reminder to you? Pause again right quick. I'm not going to lie. At one point in time, um, my grandfather had um, some orange work coveralls he used to wear. Um, he used to be a, um, I, I believe he was the manager for like the waste systems or whatever it was. And he would come out and have to like follow employees around or whatever. But he had these orange coveralls that he used to wear just in case he had to get on work. Had his name on it and everything. And um, long story short, they ended up coming down to me. I used to put them on every once in a while. And then one, it fit, which I was like, yo, this fits. This is crazy. Two, comfortable. <laughs> comfortable is all get out. Because some old working clothes like that, you had to be able to put on. You had to be able to wear stuff like that for a long period of time because you're going to be outside crawling around, you know, doing gosh know what and Lord knows what environment. Them working clothes is straight. I'm just saying they're comfortable. Coveralls like that, comfortable. Just saying. I don't blame them for that. <laughs> so. Self about the differences between now and say like the year 2000? It's actually the opposite. It's not a reminder at all. It's a forgetting. I don't have time to think about clothing. Some people mm. like go into fashion, fashion. Like I want to be free and like do all these things. There's a certain freedom in that too, but there's also a freedom in not having to think about it at all. Woo. What do you do while you wait usually when you're here? Uh, I usually go in the alley and uh, I play. I don't mean to be forward or ask for the art for free, but could we do that? I'm at a point now, like if somebody in the street was were to, were to ask me like, man, could you rap? Like, could you say something? I, it'd feel weird. I like, like I have to like get my mind, like you have to get in rap mind or rap mode. But then people ask me, hey, can you play? I'm like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah let's okay, play. Let's go. Come yeah, on. let's go. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Oh, thank you. I'm just kind of feeling what's happening at the time, so I'm just kind of making it up as it, as it goes. Like, even the, the new album was completely uh, improv and made up just a discovery path every time. Uh -huh. So you never know what patterns you will play. You never know what me melodies you're gonna play. You're on the tightrope at that point, so it's like, you gotta do something. It's very interesting that I've never been a rap freestyler. I just think too much to freestyle, you know? But this like, is somehow accessing like a different part of the brain? Yeah, I'm not thinking at all listening more than anything like listening and responding so i feel that when i started right. playing it was kind of a thing just having the flow of creativity come through you you know what i'm saying like I, I respect that too because it's like not only is it creative but it's like you're listening to yourself and you're just trying to figure out like okay what do i do next what what note goes where what what goes where whatever you know that kind of puzzle piece element to, to creating music you know and as raw elements before you take it and refine it and take it all down you know, to to the minutia where it's like this note has to be here because this is a sixth of whatever, and you know, in, in this particular musical graph, it'll fit right here in this. And like, nah, like I just wanted to flow through me because at the end of the day, the first musical instrument is your throat, right? It, it's singing. It comes from that, and then everything springs from singing. You know what I'm saying? So he's basically the flute is probably the closest we can probably get to that. You know, and having a larger range than our voice can produce, in my opinion, that or the piano, like one of the two. But I like the way that he's doing this. Like he said, it's all freestyle. Basically, it's freestyle, free form instrument. Rewind just a little bit. But that was cool. That was him just vibing out. I like it's that. very interesting that I've never been a rap freestyler. I just think too much to freestyle. Huh. You know, but this like, is somehow accessing like a different part of the brain. Yeah, I'm not thinking at all. 
listening more than anything, like listening and responding. So when I started playing, it was kind of a thing like, if you didn't know of my history, if you didn't know of album sales, if you didn't know of records, you know, accolades, anything, like I, I was getting real responses from people that didn't, like actually people would come up and give me money. Like, <laughs> yeah. Are you aware that clips of you playing your flute various places? Uh, I became aware of it and it kind of made me more self-conscious because it, it became kind of like a game. I, I, I remember I was in Philadelphia and someone came up and they was like, you know, it's like a game now. Like an actual person, they were like, you know, you know, we try to spot you. And he told me, I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of, it's kind of weird now, you know, because at first it was kind of like I would just walk for miles and miles and play and just kind of duck off in places. But now it's like, it's become a thing. Being famous is just, people don't want to say it. Like, it is a great blessing. Like I'm, I'm actually blessed to be able to create in front of people and get ideas off. That's the biggest blessing out of being famous. But being right. famous really sucks, man. Like it's so unhuman. Like I can't remember his name, but there was this classical pianist that said, it's mm. actually unnat unnatural and actually detrimental to a, a human to have that much admiration because it actually changes the way you think. It changes the way you move, you know, like. Wow. There's a hundred people on the planet Earth who were like as famous as you at one point. You know, like the experience that you've had and know, very few people know. You're like an astronaut in that sense, you know? I'm coming to grips with it, I think, because I'm older now. Like, I really see it as I'm just being used for something. You know what I mean? And I can just, I'm happy that I'm being used in a greater scheme. Like, I kind of have looked at my whole career and looked at where I am now. And I kind of feel like I'm a catalyst kind of artist where I'll do a thing that I naturally do and then, you know, people see it and then the reaction of that spawns other things to happen. You know what I mean? Wow. So I'm always watching. Well, how that's powerful right there. Powerful right there, man. He, that's powerful. Like, he's just acknowledging, like, look, I'm, a, I'm an instrument. I'm being used for something, you know? And, like, he might not see the bigger picture at the time, but he can sit back and look back as, as, a, as a grown person and understand, like, Maybe I should have been in these places or maybe I should have been creative or maybe I should have done what I've done, you know, because that's influencing all these other people, you know, like people need guidance sometimes. People need influence sometimes. You know, before I started this reaction channel, I watched a thousand reactions, <laughs> thousands of reactions from other people just to get a sense of what it is or what the genre is like or what this whole thing is about, you know, and if I'm a rapper, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to listen to music and rappers and so forth. You know, whatever industry you get into as a profession, you're going to, like, research the profession, right? Hopefully you do. Or you figure it out as you go along. <laughs> or you do both. But I like the fact that he's just being honest right here. Like, just being a thousand percent transparent with, you know, the way that things are going. Like, psh, man, this dude is, is crazy. They're crazy in a good way. Crazy. In that sense, you know. I'm coming to grips with it, I think, because I'm older now. Like, I really see it as... I'm just being used for something, you know what I mean? And I can just, I'm happy that I'm being used in a greater scheme. Like I kind of have looked at my whole career and looked at where I am now. And I kind of feel like I'm a catalyst kind of artist mm. where I'll catalyst. do a thing that I naturally do. And then, you know, people see it. And then the reaction of that spawns other things to happen. You know what I mean? So I'm always watching, well, how am I, how am I being used? Like, you know, yeah. what's happening? Yeah. Like what's What's going on right now, you know? And you can't be mad at that. Mm -mm. And then I wanted to ask about one more, the last song. Dreams once buried beneath the dungeon floor slowly sprout into undying gardens. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that, uh, that song, which is the last song on the album, just for information, that is actually the first song that we recorded as, as, as a group. We're creeping along and, and filling it out. And it just felt like this enchanted kind of garden at first. And so the title is kind of referencing that enchanted garden thing, but it's also like, I wanted to kind of like go back to the very beginning. So I wanted to like pinpoint the dungeon, the dungeon where I'm dungeon from, family. you know, See? with myself, Outcast, Goody Mob. I was wondering if that was a dungeon family reference. I knew it, I, I knew it. Goody Mob, woo! Let's go about it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look, look, that's my that's my childhood right here, boy. <laughs> I wanted to kind of like go back to the very beginning, so I wanted to like pinpoint the dungeon, the dungeon where I'm from. You know, with myself, Outcast, Goody Mob, 
Organized Noise, and we started in Rico Wade's basement, and it was Rico dirt. Wade. Like it was actually it wasn't a floor; it was actually a crawl space where the musical equipment was. And I just felt like um, there was a continuation. Like I always wanted to not. It's not a separate thing. It's a continuation from where we started. You know, mm. so everything kind of goes back to the dungeon. And when you look back at it, yeah, we were kids, and you know, we were different in high school, but even you know, choosing the name Outcast, it was like, okay, you kind of don't, you just don't fit in really. And I've really felt that way, even outside of music, just kind of in my life. Like, I don't really feel like I belong to any sect. I don't feel like I belong to the young rap crew. I don't feel like I belong to the aged adults. Um, yeah, I've just never. I feel that. Yeah, I just don't feel like, feel like you fit you in anyway. Right, so you just kind of gotta mm. take that and just, it is what it is, you know? I watched the clip of you guys being booed at the Source Awards this morning. You look so young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were youngins, man. Are those yeah. fond memories when you look back on them at oh, that time? Oh, yeah, man. They, like, those times were the best times ever, man. Like, and you wish you can get them back. Like, you wish you can all go back and sleep on the dungeon, sleep at, on the floor in the dungeon. You know, time moves on and things grow, things change, families come, new generations come, uh, generations after you come, even musically, you know, even looking at the landscape of music now, like I'm so happy and blessed that I'm still alive to be able to see like a lineage, you know, to see it, like to Do be you see clear. It? Yeah, to, I, I see it and I hear it because a lot of these guys actually like reach out and like we, we, we talk. And I think uh, lineage is important in any art form, in anything, because I think you do a disservice if you don't tell people where things came from. Mm -hmm. When I'm making music, I always feel like, oh, I wonder what, uh, what George and them would think. Or I wonder if, if Jimmy was here, what would he think? You know, or I wonder what would Prince think? You're only as good as the people before you. Yeah. It's just true because those are your building blocks. And I don't care who you are, and it will always be that way. And it will right. just keep going. I could, I could, I could relate to that. I could relate to that too. That that's the realest sentence because you always think back, not just in his example here, but think about it from your family perspective. Like you, you've gone on to do great things in your life, right? You 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 going on and you 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 hit those milestones that you wanted to hit, the brass rings that hit, and all that good stuff. But then you start back and think, like, dang, what my friend think that passed away when we were in high school? You know what I'm saying? What would he think? If he could see me now, or, or or what if my grandma was still around and, and they could see what that was doing, you know what I'm saying? All that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? You kind of have that hindsight with you, but then you can also take that internal voice and flip it into, you know, not only affirmation that you're doing the right thing and on the right path, but also flip that into something new where you're you're thinking like, hey, I can use this as creative fuel to keep doing something else or continue to do my best work that I'm doing right now, whatever the case might be, you know, like that, that kind of thought right there can be motivation and affirmation at the same time. Like that's, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Three stacks. Get out of my head, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Tell people where things came from. When I'm making music, I always feel like, Oh, I wonder what, uh, what George and them would think. Mm. Or I wonder if, if Jimmy was here, what would he think? Jimmy Hendrix. You know, or I wonder what would Prince think? You're only as good as the people before you. Yeah. yeah, it's just true because those are your building blocks and I don't care who you are and it will always be that way and it will just keep going. And that's it's 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 gratifying to know that your life has had meaning for someone wow. or a group of people. And for such a long time. I mean, like I was saying, I see how young you are in that clip. I say, like, God, these guys were so successful, so young, you know, I do you think about that? Like, did that? What kind of effect did that have on you? It was a blessing to be successful that young. Like, I think our career is kind of interesting because uh, since our very first album, we've gone platinum and just kept rising. Like, so next album was double, next three, next four. So it kept, it just kept rising. I think you're 13X today, I, I heard. Yeah, I recently heard that, which is so crazy to me. Like, so, so, so Best crazy. Best-selling rap album of all time. It's something in it, because I'm always kind of trying to figure out well, what's the, the bad in it. I don't know, I'm just a negator. We haven't taken a fall, mm. you know what I mean? And I think sometimes you build character or you build something by failure. Idlewild may have been our slip, 
You know, right. you, you never know. The only thing you can do is be honest about what you're doing at the time, because what you don't want to happen, you don't want to fall or fail when you were trying to mimic something or trying to appease someone else. Is that what keeps you away from Outcast now? And I think there's a certain chemistry that, uh, that me and Big Boy have. I think people don't understand that chemistry changes. Outcast was a, a true chemistry. The elements we had were not supposed to go together a lot of times, you know, but it's something that, and I think they call it rocket fuel. Like when you have these kind of forces that may be opposing, but they're go going for the same goal, but they kind of get this, this kind of reaction, reaction to mm. each other and it makes magic. But as, as like people, like me and Big Boy, like, like we still tough, you know, like it, didn't, it hadn't changed and it'll always be that way because we were, we were friends first. Like we weren't put into a group together or anything. So we'll always have that. But plenty of people would get. Pause, I like that. Like I say, we still tough, meaning they still, they still good friends. They still hang out together. Probably still call each other, text each other, all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I understand what he's talking about where creatively like Big Boy might be on one place and then creatively he's in a different place. And being able to sit down with somebody like that, regardless of, you know, what the people want to see and all that sort of thing. The reality is when you go into the studio and you have to sit down with that other person and try to figure out what the chemistry is going to be like or what the sound's going to be like, sometimes it just don't work. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. And, and that just means it wasn't meant to happen. And that's fine. Like acknowledging that is fine. And trying to force something is worse, you know. They could have done separate recording sessions where, like, he was over in France or whatever recording his stuff, and Big Boy could have been in Atlanta doing his stuff, and some engineer in the middle of nowhere, like, say, in Kansas or whatever, is trying to put that element together, but it's not going to feel the same. It, it wouldn't have the same spark as them being just in the in the same spot vibing together. And, and I think it's very important when you look at, like, a lot of these bands and and, you know, people that have been out for a long time where it's like, People are over here trying to figure out why come they haven't dropped a new album or or why come this album that they did put out didn't feel the same. And it's literally because the chemistry, the energy wasn't right. You know, like, it's got to be right to, for, for the reaction to work and for things to, to come out the way they should. So long story short, man, he's, he's being smart about what he's doing, like very strategic and, and maybe internalizing a lot, obviously, <laughs> which is fine. But I, I understand it and I respect it. Um, what group was that? That's on. Who was that? There's a band that just recently got back together. System of a Down. That's what. That's what it was. System of a Down. Um, l most recently, and I'm gonna rewind just a little bit because we're gonna get back into this. But System of a Down said this: We're gonna go back on tour for the fans. We're gonna do that for them. We're gonna play all the old hits, all the old music, but we're not recording new stuff together. We're not gonna do it. And my, primarily because of what he just said right there. The energy's not right. The spark's not right. They get into the, uh, the studio. They start arguing and so on and so forth. It becomes a thing. And they're like, you know what? <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth our mental health. And it's definitely not worth putting out a subpar project, you know, that people are going to hate or that will hate. Either way, like, it's not going to work out. Because if we don't like it, we're not going to play it. It's not going to win for anybody. So long story short, anyway, I, I like I like his point of view from that. And shout out to this System of a Down for, for saying that as well. Like, they're, they're, they're a thousand percent right. We can go perform for the fans. We can go do whatever. You know, I think they had a, a residency in Las Vegas not too long ago, whatever. That's fine. But they're just like, we're just not putting out new, new music at this point. So I get it. Anyway, let's go back. Trying to appease someone else. See? Is that what keeps you away from Outcast now? And I think there's a certain chemistry that, uh, that me and Big Boy have. I think people don't understand that chemistry changes. Outcast mm. was a, a true chemistry. The elements we had were not supposed to go together a lot of times, you know, but it's something that, and I think they call it rocket fuel. Like when you have these kind of forces that may be opposing, but they're go going for the same goal, but they kind of get this, this kind of reaction to each other and it makes magic. But as, as like people, like me and Big Boy, like, like we still tough. You know, like it didn't, hadn't changed and it'll always be that way because we were, we were friends first. Like we weren't put into a group together or anything. So right. we'll always have that. But plenty of people would get, especially since I think at least for years, the understanding was that he would have kept going if you would have. 
Oh that no, was... big man, big boy is big boy. He is on it. Like, he's he's back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, he is the biggest cheerleader like for Outkast. Big boy is all man. We the fucking greatest. You know, he's he's yeah. he's the Muhammad Ali kind of <laughs> like. The love between you guys is very real because I yeah. think that that energy, those different goals, would have split other people up. Not just as a group, but as like two human as beings. Humans. I do know that I'm not the controller. Big Boy is not the controller of any of this. We couldn't have planned where we are, you know, so we can't plan an ending. You guys did reunite one time to play shows, 2014. Yes. I ain't been on stage in damn near 15, 20 years. So it was like, I remember that. I it remember was odd night. for me. And actually right before the show, you see Paul McCartney walk and go to the left side of the stage. And then Prince walks to the right side of the stage. That's crazy. <laughs> what the fuck, man? And you know, there's new technologies like earbuds and shit. Like I never used earbuds in my life. Like yeah. we were always just in front of the monitors or listening to the speakers. So if you're watching the Coachella show, like I got people in my ear talking and shit. And I'm it's like, what the hell is going on? So halfway through the show, I was already checked out. Yeah. Like I was already in my bed at home, so I was just trying to get through it. And so, um, yeah, the show happens, and it was a bomb night. It was horrible. For, in my eyes, it, yeah. it was horrible. The very next morning, I get a call from Prince, which I don't know him like that. I don't know how he got my number. I, 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 I do not know. And first thing he says is, you know what your problem is? You don't realize how big y'all are. And then he was like, you got to remind people who you are. Woo. And from that point on, like, it's like, okay. Is it weird to live like when where Prince knowing calls that you, cool. you wanted to? When Prince calls you and says, hey, bro, you got to remind people, you, you got to listen. You got to listen to somebody like Prince. Just the fact that he was able to have Prince call him. That's kind of a big deal. I'm just saying. <laughs> Next week, you could be on stage in front of 60,000 people. It's only weird in like, the scale of, of thinking about that. You know, even when we did the Outcast 20, we opened up for Rolling Stones on one of the dates and I'd never seen that many people in my life. Was there like a mental adjustment to be like, oh, I'm, I'm by myself again? I'm I mean, there's been so many times in my mind where I, I thought I was done. Yeah. So it wasn't even like a struggle. It wasn't like, oh, what am I gonna do now? Like, yeah, there are times, even still now, like doing all of this, like, I remember a couple of weeks ago talking to my manager and publicist. I was like, I really had to ask myself, do I want to be just out there again? Like, mm. to do the run, to do the PR, to like, and I, I really had to ask myself, and I honestly don't. I don't want to, like, I really enjoy my life. I, I like being able to do, to do what I want as a civilian, you know, uh, when I, just walking in the world. But at the same time, I want to promote the music. So I'm only doing it to promote the music. Like I'm not, this ain't no, like no flex. And forgive me if this is like not something that's fun or comfortable to talk about because we don't have to, but it's like you've talked in the past about actually having some amount of real social anxiety. Yeah, it's true. And you, and you, and it never goes away. It's like, it's not like a, a cure all kind of thing. Um, it's just, it just becomes a part of life and you just have to kind of like take a deep breath, smile a little bit and just, get through it for tomorrow. That's the best I can, I can say, you know? Do you think that's something that developed in reaction of fame or something you always for had? For sure, for sure. I think that may have been a trigger, like a, like a traumatic kind of thing because it's really unnatural to have that much attention as a human, you know, or to have that much expectation as a human. I had to adjust people filming you all the time or just like coming up to you and like, and that was so weird to me like very, very weird, weird to me and I didn't like it. It made me not want to play at all. It made me not want to come out at all. One thing a therapist told me, he was like, well, son, the thing that makes your art what it is, is the thing that you don't like either. So it's like, fuck, what am I gonna do? What are you gonna do? Woo! It's not like I can change it. Yeah, right? Just yeah. kind of rock with it. Do you feel like something like the new record is like an attempt to just change the terms of the conversation in a way? I will say it's the most honest thing that I could do at the moment and I feel really good about it. And one thing that I noticed listening back at the album is it's kind of a reset or a reintroduction of a new volume. I'm not hey. trying to compete with people on the radio. Like most records that come out, when you master them, you master them to the loudest that they can go, you know? 
and I was having a conversation with the engineer and a lot of his engineer buddies. Speaking of volume, and I'll get back to this, I have to apologize. <laughs> and we're almost done here. Uh, the last couple of videos I dropped had low volume. And he, he's definitely right because, like, not that I'm an engineer by any means, you know, but not to that level. At least I wouldn't call myself that. But at the same time, I am engineering. I'm making sure the volumes are right. I'm making sure the volume, you know, my setup is, is set up in a way where everybody can enjoy them to a certain volume and level. Um, to me, this sounds loud. Like, I've got it way turned up, and maybe it's just me. But hopefully that means that for people that are watching this back later, they can turn it down to their, to their uh, preferred levels. And I'm very aware of that. Like, I'm, I'm aware, like, my mic is a certain distance from me. You know, uh, my, ear play, my ears are a certain level. But at the same time, I get what he's saying where it's like, you know, most most modern music is produced to be loud because they know, like, you can always turn the volume down. But it's definitely more of a hindrance to be able to turn it up, if that makes sense. You know, and hopefully it does. <laughs> you know, a uh, matter of fact, I know it does, because like in the comments I'm getting on some of these videos that I uploaded shoot uh, last night and the night before, they're too low. And people are saying I can't even enjoy it because I can't hear it. Now, if it was too loud then, you know, <laughs> that's a whole different conversation. Or I'm, I'm, they might not even say anything. But I get what he's saying here right here on the volume check. Um, but like I said, I'm not dropping this album out to compete with what's on the radio right now because what's on the radio right now is totally different than what's going to hit. Like, if you put out a jazz record, you don't really hear about jazz records like that unless you listen to jazz or instrumentals or, or soundtracks and stuff like that. The stuff that makes the most noise are pop songs, pop cultural you know, moments and big to-dos and all that stuff, big productional stuff. But when you put out something like this, here's the thing. Like, he's talking about being able to, like, still be out and, and live life. I think after this album, like, people will give him a little attention. But honestly, I see it tapering off because it's not going to necessarily do, you know, what, what most albums are going to do. It's not going to put him in the limelight and have him paraded around and all that it's basically going to come out and people are, that that are heads, people like me that listen to music are going to listen to it and treasure it and love it, but it's not going to give them that same level of attention compared to like when he put out The Love Below or when he put out Hey Ya or, or wh whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like those kind of songs. So anyway, let me wrap this thing up. But I, I definitely see where he's coming from, but I don't think it's going to hit him the way he thinks it is. Maybe, maybe in the short term, long term, I think he's going to go back to where he is right now. We'll see. We'll see, though. We'll know once we hear the project, I guess. <laughs> Let's go. And as a human, you know, or to have that much expectation as a human, I had to adjust people filming you all the time or just like coming up to you. And like and that was so weird to me, like very, very weird, weird to me. And I didn't like it. It mm -hmm. made me not want to play at all. It made me not want to come out I can see at all. Too. One thing a therapist told me, he was like, well, son, the thing that makes your art what it is, it's the Shout thing that you don't like. So it's like, fuck, what am I going to do? What are you going to do? It's not like I can change it. Yeah. Just yeah. kind of rock with it. Do you feel like something like the new record is like an attempt to just change, change the terms the of the conversation in a way? I will say it's the this most honest smart. thing that I could do at the moment. And I feel really good about it. And one thing that I noticed listening back at the album is it's kind of a reset or a reintroduction of a new volume. I'm not trying to compete with people on the radio. Like most records that come out, when you master them, you master them to the loudest that they can go, you know? And I was having a conversation with the engineer and a lot of his engineer buddies, they were saying, we've realized as engineers that as humans, we've gotten as loud as we can get in human history. Ooh. When you think about that, we can't get any louder. As an engineer, people send you files. A lot of times they look like these thick bars, mm -hmm. a solid bars when music looks, used to look like that. Sure, Wait. dynamic. Dynamic. Yeah. And so on the record, there's certain kind of suggested listening, you know, tactics like we would say, you know, listen at a low to mid volume, you know, because these are not bangers. When you listen to music now, do you hear your influence? Yeah. Where do you hear it most? Uh, certain artists. Uh, I see it visually. Um, I see it uh, more, more in spirit and people pushing things and trying, trying things. And I love, I love the, the spirit. Like, I think I'm happy that people caught on on the spirit part. Like you see Tyler and them, you see like Tizo touchdown and those guys, like you're like, ah. 
what the coolest thing is, it's not like a signing. It's not like a copy. It's the next. It's a lineage. It's a lineage. Yeah. Mm. It's a lineage. Like oh, these man. people got their own thing. Like, do you allow yourself to picture how people real. might react to this record when it's out in the world? Yeah, I do. What do you picture? I have a lot of different outcomes, and it depends on different people. Like, you yeah. may get someone that cries. You uh -huh. may get someone that immediately starts to do yoga. Then you got the homie that be like, y'all gonna put some beats on that shit? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. my friends don't always like my music, which is hilarious to me. Like, one of my homies told me, like, after I finished Hey Ya and I played it for him, uh, <laughs> he said, he said, man, if you put that out, man, your career is over. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, damn, but I like this shit. Or like, yeah. Do you have any other plans around it in terms of, Will you tour? Will you? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm glad you asked that. So the cool thing about how we recorded it, making up the sound, like everything that y'all are hearing, we made it up at, at that point. And so the live performances will be that again. So we get to actually go out and do it live. And like, I actually had to go back and listen and relearn some of the Eagle melodies that I played, but it'll always be a completely new performance every time. Have you thought much about just being on stage again? Yes. I have, and it's terrifying. <laughs> it is terrifying. It's a very new experience for me. Like, I'm going. Which is totally different I'm from going. getting on stage and rapping some songs. There's I'm more going. involved in what I have to do now than rapping songs that I've written. That's kind of like muscle memory and just energy, and you're able to hide some of the nervousness through your energy. Here, it's all in your face. You're on a tightrope the whole time. Like, I can't hide behind a beat that you already know or hide behind lyrics that you already are into. It is what it is. It's fun to do it, like when I'm, when I'm actually playing, it's fun, it's fun. Wow. My boy's on a whole spiritual journey right now, man. He's on a whole different arc. Man. Shout out to GQ for making this happen, man. Shout out to GQ for, for doing this. And shout out to the interviewer. Um, really good questions, really good way to frame things and kind of move the conversation to where, you know, Andre is able to, to share his thoughts and his perspective and give him the breath to, to, to deep dive and really just expose where he's at right now in his life when it comes to music and where it comes to, like, his creativity and and obviously when there's privacy and there's peace, like, just like any of us. Like, we want a little bit of peace and privacy, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it's like, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you want to go out to the laundromat and do some laundry. Here's here's the the fun perspective. Like us as YouTubers, obviously, we crave attention. We want attention. This is what it is. Like it, a thousand percent. We want affirmation from likes and subscribers and all that stuff, you know. But what happens when you get that? What happens when you get to the point where if I walked outside, like. I couldn't walk outside, <laughs> you know, what, what would I do with that? What would I do with that energy? And I don't know if I'll ever get to that place. You know, if it, if it comes down to that, if that's my goal, if that's what I want to do. But at the same time, it's like hearing people like this that have had that for a long time, long period of time to the point where he wanted to kind of give it up to reset and then come back and even question the fact like, Hey, do I really want to do this again? This alone, just this conversation lets us know how important people like this are um, to be an example of uh, and to share their light and their perspective, you know, because at the end of the day, it's like it, it, it gives you the information you need to, you know, how, how I want to say it. It definitely gives you the information to make informed decisions and informed choices about what your next move should be or what you want them to be. And for some people, they still want to chase it. They want to chase it and, and take it and never, you know, never be the one to like, how do I want to say it? <laughs> never be the one to be like ungrateful. That's what I want to say. Be ungrateful to, to what's happened to them. You know, I, I think even Taylor Swift said it not too long ago. She had an interview talking about like, she can't walk anywhere normally, you know, her and the whole Travis Kelsey thing and all that stuff, whatever that's going on. It's not normal. But at the same time, she's like, I remember praying for stuff like this. And even he said it. I remember praying for these moments. Like, I just want to be famous and so on and so forth. And now they got it. So they want to be humble and, you know, appreciative. But at the same time, it's like, 
it sucks. <laughs> and I'm glad that he came out and said that. It sucks. It sucks sometimes. It, it is not fun. But it gives you so many opportunities. It gives you a platform. It, it, it's really a blessing. Um, when you really have something important to say or you want to take on a new challenge or do something new, you have, you know, the ability to do that and, and, and be able to take care of your people at the same time. Like, I like that. Yeah, man, I can't wait for this project. That's all I got to say about it. I can't wait for this project. So I'm probably going to be doing this today. I'll probably record a couple more things, put them out. I got one uploading right now that's um, on the way. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm probably going to take a nap. <laughs> that way I can get some sleep tonight and then wake up later tonight. And I I'm going to try to see if I can get this this project, either live stream it or, or chop it up or do something like this. I don't know what I'm going to do quite yet. Um, I might live stream it, actually. I think that's what I'll, what I'll do. Put a live stream up because I haven't done a live stream on here before. So I'm definitely wanting to maybe check that out and, and maybe experiment with myself a little bit. He's talking about taking a leap. Live stream it is. You heard it here first. So, hey, shout out to Andre3000 for this one, man. Looking forward to this creative project, you know, and I, I want to see what he's doing on here. I also want to see how I'm going to format these titles of these songs because they're long as heck. <laughs> oh, man. But at any rate, hey, I'm going to get out of this video. Thanks for watching along with me. If you haven't um, already, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit the sub button. All that sort of thing, man. It helps my little channel grow over here. We're on our way to 20,000 subscribers as we speak. That's my stretch goal for the end of the year. Um, whether I get there or not, I don't know. I'm at 12,000 right now. 20 is a big, a big number, but whatever. I'm here for it, bro. So anyway, <laughs> I'm Marvin. This is Smitty Reacts. I'm out of here. So until the next one, please take care of yourself. Be kind to one another. And of course, if you guys can do that, I'll catch you in the next video. All right? All right. Peace.